Everybody has a few controversial bourbon opinions. I reached out to you guys over on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram to see what yours were, and oh boy, are some of these a doozy. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Brad's Bourbon Reviews. I'm Brad, and today we are going to be going through your controversial bourbon opinions. This is probably just a part one of this video. There's probably gonna be more than one. You don't see your comment in there, just know it's probably safe for a part two. But I got a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of comments, especially over on TikTok. Enough talking about it. Let's go ahead and get into some of these. First up from Oak City Bourbon. Here's one, not all finished whiskey is garbage. That's true, not all finished whiskey is garbage. I would personally say that a lot of it is not great. I think the problem is it's just finishing in things that I don't necessarily love. Like I'm not a big wine person. So for me to get like a finished port or something like that, it's just not up my alley. It's not what I'm into but I wouldn't say it's garbage. This comes from the bottom shelf king. He says, Buffalo Trace is not the end all be all for bourbon. I'm not sure who told you it was, but fair, I guess. I don't think it's the end all be all. I do think that they put out the best bottles for the retail. Now here's the thing, Buffalo Trace bottles, hard to find. And when you do find them, in most cases, the prices are jacked up. However, that is not Buffalo Trace's doing. That is the liquor store raising those prices. I think if you can get a Buffalo Trace bottle at what MSRP is, you can't really do much better than those bottles at the MSRP. I mean, like Elmer T. Lee is $41. Better than most other single barrels from other distilleries, in my opinion. This comes from Barrel Proof Brook. It says, Blanton's is mid. Original Blanton's is mid, I agree with you. However, Blanton's gold and Blanton's straight from the barrel, not mid, top tier, S tier in those cases. Maybe I think from straight from the barrel is like A tier, but Blanton's gold is friggin' S tier bourbon and I will not be taking questions. This comes from AK47 user and it says, craft bourbons are trash. With no explanation of to what, I disagree. I think there's some, I think the problem is for the most part, what you pay because they are a much smaller operation, it's not quite worth what's in the bottle. I don't think that means they're trash though. And I think that is, uh, is an overall sweeping statement is uh, something I don't agree with. Uh, this comes from LC. It says, it's okay to let people like what they like. It is okay. Unless that thing that you like is Basil Hayden. Moving on to the next one. Traveling Man says, Buffalo Trace products are overrated. Uh, I think I would, while I love, 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 love most of the things from Buffalo Trace, I think I have to agree. I think like freaking out over a bottle of Buffalo Trace itself or a bottle of like Weller Special Reserve or something like that, even Eagle Rare uh, is not worth the like the fuss and like the craziness it takes and for a lot of people to get those bottles i would agree with that however what's in the bottle to me is spectacular especially if you can get it retail like i said before uh, this comes from s t t t t t i think i said that correct with enough t's uh it says pappy van winkle is extremely overrated a lot of buffalo trace hate on this again i, I for me that falls in line with for twelve hundred dollars yeah absolutely uh, for a hundred dollars for which is what like the Pappy, uh, the uh, old rip and we cool tenure. I think retail is like 80 bucks for $80. No, it's not overrated. It's fantastic bourbon for $80. But again, if you're paying $1,500 for that, that's your fault. This comes from skipper and it says higher proof. Isn't always better. Uh, correct. Uh, look at Michter's 10 year bourbon batch, whatever it was last year. That's like an, uh, like a 90 proof bourbon. It's fantastic. I think buff, uh, Jack Daniels 10 year is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. And that is at like 97 proof. So that absolutely is true. Jim Palmer, six, seven, five says Pappy is for beginners and novice bourbon drinkers. Experienced drinkers want more from their whiskey. Novice. I don't think that's fair to say. I have friends that have had way more experience with whiskey and bourbon than I have and probably ever will have. And they still go back to those bottles and they have things that super hard to find, hard to find allocated stuff. And I think the quality is just there for Pappy. And I disagree with that. Moving on to the next one. This comes from Gabriel. He says, finally, Four Roses isn't good. Doesn't deserve the hype it gets. Sir, sir, what, what are you saying? I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Four Roses is fantastic. Uh, this is user, and this is a long one. Buckle up, folks. User 914235524401. For sure, get a better name. He says, Sazerac is overrated and Brown Foreman is king. Drink neat most of the time, but over a cube every now and then. 
blows your mind. I don't know if that last sentence was a typo, uh, but I agree with some of that. I do actually think Brown Foreman is uh, like a fantastic, fantastic company. Like I love all the things they produce. Old Forester, Jack Daniels, all that stuff comes from Brown Foreman and I love everything they do. I don't think Sazerac is overrated. I think people just get upset about Buffalo Tray stuff because they get upset when they see the price points and that's totally justifiable. Just don't pay those prices and then you get a really good bottle of whiskey for $41 like I did today with Elmer T. Lee. Uh, also to that point, I agree. I drink my whiskey neat for the most part. If I'm drinking whiskey cold, it's with Coke and that's like my go-to when I'm drinking whiskey cold. But outside of that, I don't drink whiskey anything outside of neat typically. This comes from Piofa, P-J-O-F-A, hope I said your name right. Uh, drink bourbon however you like, soda, water, ice, straight, whatever. Agreed, that I just because I drink it a certain way uh, doesn't mean I'm right. I will defend my stance as this is what the whiskey is intended to taste like. We you try your whiskey with Coke or ice, you're changing the flavor profile. Now that change could be something that you enjoy. In my opinion, you are changing the flavor profile and it's not an exact, expression at that point, it's altered a little bit. Now that could be good for you, but I just like to try it, at least try it neat. That's what I say. Take that advice or don't, that's fine too. I don't care, I'm an idiot, don't listen to me. Moving on to the next one. This one comes from Paul Lafleur. It says the difference between 25 and $80 isn't huge and there's nothing over a hundred dollars worth it. I think that is complete nonsense, but that is a that is that is your take, and you stand behind it. And uh, I think, but I think that's a bad take. Uh, I think there is a huge difference between something like Buffalo Trace and George T. Stag. And George T. Stag is over a hundred dollars, even at retail, and that is absolutely worth it. So, right there, debunked. You've been proven wrong. Moving on to the next one. This one comes from Bourbon and Bud Budgies. Uh, Buffalo Trace is overrated, in all caps, screaming at me. I'm sorry, sir, I don't know what Buffalo hurt you. A lot of Buffalo Trace hate. This is really hurting my soul. Comes from Blazerman541. He asked a question, not what I asked, but that's fine. Uh, he says, is Jack Daniels bourbon? Yes, it meets both legal qualifications for Tennessee whiskey and bourbon as well. And in fact, when they export it into other countries, they export it as bourbon. So yes, it is bourbon. They will tell you it's bourbon. I say it's bourbon. And I speak on behalf of the Jack Daniels company. No, I don't. That's a joke. Moving on. Uh, this comes from Jerdy Woods, J-E-R-D-I Woods. This says Evan Williams tastes better than Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, no. No, it does not. Don't say that again. Moving on to the next one. This comes from Bourbon Berry. On the flip side, which I disagree with this too, it says, I don't like Evan Williams bottled in bond. Barry, I know we're friends. I hate you, bro. That's dumb. Moving on to the next one. This is a twofer from Donovan for free drill. I hope I said you that. I, I'm not good at names. Okay, sorry. It says, Blanton's is overrated. Put Blanton's in a normal bottle and it will sit on the shelf. They kind of did. It's ancient age. And you're right. It does kind of sit on the shelves. It's very close. Different aging, obviously. But same mash bill, same all that stuff. If you can't find Blanton's, this is a good 80 proof version. Moving on to the next one. This is from my buddy Cinna Bourbon. Just, well, I'm going to quote it. Actually, what it says. It says, just all Amberana finishes are garbage. I don't know. I haven't tried them. Moving on to the next one. Next one comes from Mythology Ho. It says... I didn't come up with that name. I didn't do it. That's the name they chose. Don't want to tell you. People need to stop paying secondary prices and letting FOMO ruin their finances when it comes to allocated whiskey. We also need to stop encouraging small stores to keep selling at secondary or higher prices, make raffles and rewarding loyal customers, not just rich people with too much money, the new standard. Agreed. Uh, if you if you can't afford something, don't, I mean, don't ruin your, your whiskey, your finances over whiskey. That's crazy. That's like the most irresponsible thing I've ever heard. Any store that sells things secondary prices, I don't shop there. Uh, I don't support it because I know what's gonna happen is me buying those other kind of bottles is gonna get them more stuff for allocation and then I won't be involved because I know they'll sell it for three times the price. So I try not to do any stores like that. And it does take some digging, but stores like that do exist where you can buy things at non-crazy prices. So find them in your area and support those stores that don't do that. This comes from firefighter1413 underscore Eric. It says, Russell's tenure is not where it's at. Russell's tenure is exactly where it's at. Moving on to the next one. Uh, this comes from Joseph Strinder over on YouTube, I think. Uh, it says, everything I've tried from Buffalo Trace Distillery is way overrated. Eagle Rare, Colonel Taylor, Stag, Blanton's way too hyped. Old Ezra seven year beats any of those hands down. No, the fuck it doesn't. So do a lot of other bourbons. That is also incorrect, kind of. I, don't, I kind of agree. Frey Ranch Uncut, Uncle Nearest Single Barrel, etc. put them to shame. Uncle Nearest does not put anything to shame. Uncle Nearest Single Barrel doesn't even put Uncle Nearest Small Batch to shame. I prefer the Small Batch. Uh, this comes from Ken Blankenship. It says Miller Lite is the best bourbon. Moving on. 
We're going to end with this one because I think this is going to be kind of a long video. We'll do a part two of these. Uh, this is from Gabby's Bourbon and BS. I don't like Russell's tenure. Another person not liking Russell's tenure. I don't like Russell's tenure. Green River Weeded is terrible and Four Roses Single Barrel is overrated. So let me dissect that. Russell's 10 slaps. You're wrong. Uh, Green River Weeded is terrible. I completely agree with you on that. I do not like that bottle at all. I tried it on a review, didn't like it, and then it turned into a mixer and the cork doesn't stay in. So it's just, I think it's literally just sitting on myself, on my shelf, just like evaporating. I have no desire to try anything else from Green River, at least now since something that's not like a single barrel pick, something like that I will do, but just regular, I'm kind of good. And Four Roses single barrel is overrated. I would like to know how many single barrels of those you've tried. I have one that I bet you would really, really like. If you want it, hit me up. I know you watch these videos and uh, maybe we can see if you like this one. Try the barrel proof ones. I think the barrel proof single barrels, like the barrel shrinks are, are the better ones. Well, that's the first part of this video. I have about 90 more of these comments to go through. So we'll do a part two and probably a th three or four because the post just keeps growing. So I'd like to know your controversial bourbon opinions. Comment down below what's something you think that was crazy on that. And on the next one, I'll give my controversial bourbon takes because I have quite a few of them. Uh, spoiler alert, I think Jack Daniels is the king distillery out there right now. That's my controversial take. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe when we hit a thousand subscribers. I'll do that giveaway or give one person five, two ounces out of anything I have in the entire whiskey collection. So make sure you do that. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, cheers.